the thoughts that went into my choice not to go to Antibes for Tom's wedding, I'm still not sure what went into that choice. Given my family's inherent ability to destroy everything we touch, the best gift I could give my brother is not to go to his wedding. The Jordash family doesn't bring itself much luck. You chose not to do something. What did you choose to do? Stay in L.A., re-edit my lover's film, live in the life I made where I'm necessary. Be Gretchen Burke instead of Axel and Mary Jordash's daughter, or Rudy and Tommy's sister. The years in England were good for me. I'm even okay these days at not being Colin Burke's widow. The sticking point remains as ever, Billy Abbott. My son, my soldier son, who grows not up, but sideways. I guess Billy still feels my having lovers as a betrayal of his stepfather. As the root cause of Colin missing that curve on the coast highway. Four years ago, Billy hadn't the maturity to understand where Colin and I were. So, blaming Colin's death on my infidelity, he joins the army. That's an assumption, of course, but I haven't seen him since he turned 21. Given your assumption, what choice would you make about Billy? I don't know. My mother chose to cut us off when she was ill. She chose not to be a mother. I suppose if I can't make things right with my son, I'll settle for keeping things as they are. I went through a lot of men to get to Evans Kinsella. I weathered a lot of crumbs. That's why I didn't go to France. I want to keep things as they are. What if you can't have that choice? Things happen. Things are famous for it. <laughs> Thank you. Why buy the picture if the ending is unacceptable? It only ran 16 weeks at Brown's Chinese. Didn't anyone bother to see it? Poor Evans. He do what they asked me for in his masterpiece. His masterpiece? The word for your editing. He... I know, bite my tongue. I just would like you to explain to me why, since it was Loverboy who fought for the right to edit this movie for television himself, he is not here when the rent comes due. Ned Chanik's giving a barbecue this afternoon. Evans couldn't very well be in two places at once. Ah, but genius that he is. Our wunderkind must have a solution to this problem, no? I mean, he can't leave a decision this important to us, the resident elves. Oh, come on, Ida. If I'm not complaining, why should you? Because I'm tired of watching people dump their messes on you. And then you feeling guilty when you can't clean them up. I saw my shrink this morning. You're smoking too much. Love you, too. <clears throat> what if... What if the hero didn't kill him? Hmm? Hello? <laughs> Sorry. So we could end the picture with Bancroft seeing his wife in St. John, forgiving them, yeah. putting the gun down, and walking away, out of their lives. It's not the ending the author had in mind, but it's just as powerful. It's lovely, but where in all this footage do we have a scene of him forgiving and walking away? He's got pictures, we'll make a scene. So, let's work backwards. Walking away is easy. We've got him walking away from the house after the shooting. Right. Print film of a man drawing a gun backwards. You've got film of a man putting a gun away. ESP, I was just about to call you, love. The benevolent despot for whom we toil has this very moment ordered me to a summit meeting on the flick we're prepping. And in the springs yet, the man has no mercy. Well, I reckon a fellow's got to do what a fellow's got to do. I just wish you could see the new ending. Well, step on the way for your things. Just no time, ma'am. Too busy. Love you, and we'll make it up. Ciao. <laughs> well, we got a whole 18 minutes to get you back to your convoy. What are you sweating, Coberly? Oh, just you selling a load of the Army's fuel on the black market. Just the MPs and CIDs, you know, just that little thing. You know, someone at your battalion motor park has got to notice when a convoy from Corps is one truck short, 
And somebody's got to notice when 5,000 gallons of the Army's diesel fuel didn't arrive. It's somebody's job, man. Listen, noticing's my job. It's what Uncle Sam pays me for. Now, be cool, Oliver. Yeah. Leavenworth, that's where I'll be cool. And if they don't ship us both off to Nam and... Oh, wow. Hey, look, I'm sorry about that, man. They weren't here yesterday. Listen, hang on. So I am your enemy. Oh, you're much too beautiful to be the enemy, but you are kind of my way. Listen to me. Your enemies are not us. Young men should not be made to kill. Oh, look, maybe we ought to get together and talk about this sometime. Is your phone number on here? You always so frivolous? Hey, believe me, son. Oh, God. Go back overly now. Hey, look, just relax. Well, it's gonna be free to Henry Cassern, but fat till I kill you in the stockade. Stop him, he! He wants to make a pyramid, but down with him, pyramid! Okay, Sergeant, just follow the lead jeep and we'll protect you. Well, thank you, Sergeant. Sir Anama, your name for our line. Yours too, mine, huh? Bon Monica. I am Manfred Latin. Hey, look, you wait here. I'll be right back. He's buying us all and you don't know our names? I'm new here. What's your business on U.S. military property? Hey, look, Sergeant, she wasn't doing anything. Certainly I'm doing something. I'm trying to stop law and oppression. We, we can work something out, huh? Is that a fact? First name and service number, Sergeant Abbott. Abbott, William, RA 66954385. Listen, you call me Battalion Motor Park, ask for Billy. I got a listed number in town. I live in Schwabing. Abbott, do not provoke the police. Stay away from me. Be safe. Hey, Sergeant Abbott. You're permanent party at Henry Cassern. What are you doing driving a core fuel truck? Well, you know, Coberly. He got lost, then I found him. Call me. Escorted in. Wow. All right. Take good care of this boy, Lord. He has the power to cloud men's minds. Game, set, and match to Colonel Day and Sergeant Abbott. Nice shot, Billy. Thanks. Nice game, gentlemen. All right, the drakes are on me. Come on, son. Let's see how you enjoy fraternizing with the officers. I'll be there in a minute, sir. Sergeant Abbott, you have a telephone call. Hello, Abbott. Hi there. And here's my GI who drinks with the officers when I expect to find him shivering in a prison cell. Hmm? Come on. What happened? Oh, nothing. I... It's lucky I got a high pain threshold. Just kind of touch and go there for a while. No, I'm okay. Come on. Well, I'm still bitter. Billy, I wanted to meet my friends. Sam Schiller, Joe Daimler, Manfred Latin. Yeah, we met. Egan Hirsch. How are you doing? Egon, I was right. My brave friend was interrogated by the military police and he was hurt. First they refused to question you and then they forced you to play tennis with the officers. Huh? 
the unique method of faking him, Morel? Would I shine you on? Huh? You know, shine you on. It, it gives you, it's an expression. I see. Come on. Yeah, it's nice to meet you. I think I'll sit with my back to the wall and be paranoid too. <laughs> hey, Gunny's little man. Yeah, you sleeping with him? What? You sleeping with him? We knew each other at the Free University in Berlin. He was not jealous of you. Well, I would be. Olegan and his pals didn't like me for some reason. They like you. It's just that they're serious revolutionaries. Tell me about it. <laughs> I really should not joke about it. You were in trouble because you came to my defense. Hey, they gave you a lot worse trouble. No, they just gave my name to the band day. Said I must expect. As a pacifist, I have the right to bring harm to myself. I do not have the right to bring injury to another person. Oh, my God. I'm going to get you a doctor and a civilian attorney. I don't need a doctor. Abbott, you don't have to put on a brave face to, to spare my feelings. Your life is no joke to me, Abbott. What the army did to you was an atrocity. Listen to me. What I'm doing to the army is a real atrocity. I'm not one of your victims of class oppression. I enlisted. I'm, what do you call it, bourgeois hopelessly, and I'm proud of it. My mother's a film editor out in Hollywood. I'm not sure. There's more. About today in the tennis, I, uh, well, it's, it's just a role that I play. It insulates me from a lot of tactless inquiries about my black market operations. That's not. Well, it gets worse. I lied to you. I, I lied to you just to impress you. And it's, it was all a fake, a come on. You understand? Uh, I didn't get in trouble with the MPs. And I hope to God I didn't get you in trouble with the BNP. Are you telling me that this whole story about the boot of military police was just to make me care? Is that it? You want pacifist? I wrote the book. Okay. What, torture? Uh, you have to settle for a case of tennis elbow. I don't believe you. <laughs> you are terrible, really. And I am naive. Egg on you, you lied immediately. Yeah, well, he stiffed me with the check. Yeah, well, you bloody well deserve it. I was so worried about my poor GI and his injury that I was completely fooled. <laughs> I come badly prepared to this. What is to happen to me if I have emotions about you? I had misgivings, but, uh, dynamite. That's the word, dynamite, like it before, love it now. The Kinsella touch, it's too good for him. <sighs> what can I say except, gee, thanks, fellas. He could say that you saved his royal fanny again, but you notice I'm not holding my breath. <clears throat> I think we should take a meeting on your next project. Just say next weekend at the Springs. I added a guest house since your last visit, E.K. Your last visit, I thought that... That's Ned's idea of cute. He thinks Machiavelli was a lounge comic. Editorial said I can find Gretchen Burke here. Thanks. 
It had to happen, of course. I always expected to hear it in a phone call from Rudy. But it was a telegram. What? I'm sorry. My brother Tom was killed. Oh, my God. I do have to go to France after all. I'm really quite sorry, Evans. A new picture about to start. It's not fair to you. If you want to replace me. Of course I won't replace you. I don't sit on the dailies until you get back. I have to wire Billy. Make a reservation to Nice. Hotel woman on Tebe. Traveler's checks. Evans, I want you to come home with me now. Well, it might be better if I'd, uh... No, uh, no. I'll cry soon, Evans. I want us to make love now. God forgive me. I take it you were very close to your Uncle Thomas. Well, yes, sir, I was. Very. Well, you'll need ten days compassionate leave for the funeral. Make that two weeks. Or if you need any money, son, don't bother with the chaplain's fund. I'll take care of it. Well, thank you very much, sir. two weeks leave. You got any clothes for Paris in that statue you live out of? Paris? Yeah, Paris. Look, I already made a reservation at this modest little pension. Yeah, and I have made an investigation of your scandalous lifestyle. Yeah? You have many women, Abbott. Why do you not invite one of them? Because you are the only one I know that can instruct me in the politics of non-violence. <laughs> you crazy? Mind about my lifestyle, will you? Get in. Get in. You're impossible. <laughs> Well, I always held a view that a little corruption goes a long, long way. <laughs> ah, there's nothing on the television but this childish idealist group check. This is Czechoslovak socialism with a human face. Sure. <laughs> well, have it. The Hotel Fontaine. <laughs> <laughs> you expect you inherit a fortune from this uncle of yours? <laughs> Were you his favorite? Yeah, I wish. I spent one whole furlough once trying to promote a cruise on his boat. I didn't impress him. He impressed me, though. He was a hell of a man. Well, uh, there's still time to drive to Antibes for the funeral. Mm -hmm. What for? My uncle's daddy wouldn't appreciate it. Besides, there's really nobody I want to see in Antibes anyway. Uh, well, um, how about your mother? Well, no more than I want to see your mother. <laughs> Up the revolution. Mm. Now, about sex. Uh, but when we eat first, and then we can, um, have it. You do not have to play your bourgeois romantic games with me. It's not games, Monica. Dreams. I, I would feel selfish sharing such dreams with you, huh? All that to do in the world, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, you gotta start somewhere. I volunteer. <laughs> you sure? Abbott? Come on. Oh, God. <laughs> Come on, I'm being uh, rabid. I'm being rabid. <laughs> Then. I'm Gretchen. 
I'd hoped my son Billy would be here too, but I'm afraid he couldn't get leave from the army. He uh, wired me at the hotel to say how sorry he is. He was very fond of Tom. Kate, have I permission to come aboard? Well, it's not the Navy. It's all the radar your bleeding brother Rudy gave us. Bunny's off fetching Tom. And then we'll get underway. I believe Wes is below. How'd you do? What about Rudy and his wife? Aren't they coming? I'm not being here, Wesley. It's all right. It's not his fault. He's a cool guy. Brought me the Stones' Aftermath record last year. But I didn't have anything to play it on. How was he? How did he look? He looked good. He tried to teach me how to play tennis. But I guess it's just not my game. See him on the court, though. It's really something. He got that from his stepfather. I don't understand something. You don't sound American. I mean, not like my pa. <laughs> I lived for five years in England. Some of it rubbed off. I made a terrific shepherd's pie. Wesley, how are we doing on the fuel? Slow. Take it to the pump. You better hang on to something. It's my first time. <laughs> I trust you. Ooh. But I cannot accept this check, Bunny. What the hell are you talking about? There's more than 10,000 francs in that account. The account is in the name of Monsieur Thomas Jordache. I need his signature. Hey, you want me to deposit a check that won't be honored? Mr. Thibault, how much do they owe you in dollars? I'm sure you'll take travelers' checks. We ran Clotilde at a profit, didn't we? Small profit. But that's the problem. Tom signed two notes that you now have to pay on. They're due a man named Babel at usurious interest rates, I'm afraid. Now, you're doing well enough for normal expenses and taxes. But unless you increase business, you won't be able to meet both the notes and the taxes. So we've got to work harder to hang on to what's ours, or the government or that man Babel can just take it all away. Money. You'll have to consult a lawyer, Kate. I'll ask the American consul at Nice to recommend someone. Now, you'll want the Clotilde's registry, 
and Tom's bank account transferred to your name. And then there's the matter of Wesley's status. At 17, he's still a minor. I know it seems hopeless, but uh, I'll do the best I can. Well, inconvenient. For Tom to get murdered, won't it? Well, we're going to make it three of us. Four come the second week of September. <laughs> Tom's babe be an American if it's born on Clotilde. Oh, shut it up, shut it up, shut it up. Oh, damn Tom, oh, damn him. Anything about Danaby. Sussex says he'll call if there's any news. Oh. Hi, Gretchen. Hi. Well, looks like we're stuck with you, Wes, for as long as you behave yourself, and he's fixing those bank accounts. Wonder if that's uh, Rudy Jordash apologizing for murdering Tom again. Uh, well, it could be a late charter. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> Nobody told you how it happened? Well, right after Kate and Tom's wedding, Rudy's wife got drunk out of a skull, picked up on a guy. You know, uh, maybe it was her fault, maybe not. Well, either way, she called Tom, she didn't call her husband. Tom went down to the uh, Fort Rose and beat the hell out of Danovic and got her out. Danovic healed up a day, come looking for Tom. Now, the police, they, uh, they knew about this, except for the fact that they just hadn't been able to put their hands on Dynavik yet. Rudy and his wife were on a plane out of here before Tom was killed. Kate sent a wire saying she didn't want him to come to the funeral. We didn't want to be. To tell you the truth, well, we weren't prepared for you. Families. He's not here, ma'am. Sergeant Abbott's on compassionate leave. If, if you can give me your name, ma'am, I'll be glad to take a message for him. No, just tell him his mother called. There's no point in the message. Chabano has got one minute. Mm. Busy, busy today. Worse tonight. Yeah. Bastille Day must be a bummer for you guys. Uh -huh. Thanks, Dad. Come in. Morning, Inspector Chabonneau. Sazerac tells me that you caught Danovic last night. Thanks a lot. At the time that your father was killed, Danovic and two friends were at the emergency admitting room at St. Bartholomew's Hospital, where the suspect had been taken after she developed internal hemorrhaging as a result of the hard beating inflicted by your father. We've gotten this full corroboration of three impartial witnesses. Sir, they're lying. All of them. You know my dad punched out Danovic for raping my Aunt Julie. Take care how you speak, young man. We know only one thing. Your father assaulted Danovic, allegedly motivated by an alleged rape. 
Madame Julia Jordache left France without filing a complaint. Sir, we're telling the truth. Are you? Your father brought you to France about 10 months ago. You knew very little of his life here. And I know the ports. And I know that on the ports. Bad types murder bad types. Now I advise you once again, young man, for your own welfare, be very careful. Where you been? I've been looking all over for you. Denison had an alibi. Charbonneau let him go even on the rape. How old do I have to get? 18? They can draft me when I'm 18. Are guys like Charbonneau gonna treat me like a man then? Charbonneau. You stay away from him. He'll push on you. Now, a guy like that, you, you just stay away from him. Look, hell, there, there is no justice. Not from the cops, not from the law. Not, not from them, no. I know what you're thinking, and and that's okay. But damn it, you gotta listen to me. Hey, you know my uh, my tux is uh, covered in caviar stains, and I can't go break the bank over in Monte Carlo tonight. So I figured you and me would hit a few bars around here. Uh, you know, some of us colorful waterfront types. But um, I don't have the cash. And Gretchen, like always. You know, I'm getting to love that woman more and more. our drinks and then let's let's go watch fireworks okay huh can't get a cab when it rains the pa told me that it's about all he told me keep talking about me like that kid just keep it up hey uh <clears throat> come here come here now you're either gonna have to fight him or you're gonna have to buy him a drink I already bought it. Buy him a drink. Uh -uh. Damn it, Wesley, you're the hard... Walk shit me off, kid. Clotilde. Look for another first. Clotilde ain't gonna be too popular, no one. On location. I see. No, no message. Uh, Mr. Kinsella has my number.
Hello? It's Bonnie. Uh, is Kate still there? No, she's staying at a pension, uh, but I don't know where. I can hardly hear you. Well, uh, I'm at the, uh, I'm at the police station. Uh, you sure she didn't say, because it's kind of important. Bunny, what happened? I, uh, I took Wes drinking and he, uh, ended up decking a couple of guys in a bar. So the police took him up to the prison in Gross. And the only reason they, uh, they busted him all is because these two agents are from the DST. Well, see, they're like the French FBI and just as stupid. Well, they mixed in, so Wes had to cold cock one of them. Look, I'm sorry, but we all, we all got to go through this sometime, but, uh, I'm really sorry. Sonny, the boy's in jail. Damn. Um, I'll cancel my flight and get hold of that lawyer again. Now, stay put. I'll be right over. I'm Magliotti. You're the dude that decked the DST. You're a big hit here. Yeah. Guards love it. Yeah, the local pigs hated the ST. Everybody got a big laugh. Maybe you're gonna hit somebody I could name when you get out. What? Donovic. What do you care about him and me? His friends are enemies of my friends. I'll tell him that when I look him up in Antti. Ah, then you'll find him with his friends. Donovic is almost never alone. Almost. But there is a way. I'll explain to you later. You see, my friends keep watching our enemies, so you can hit them. Well, why don't your friends take care of them then? Uh, Sartén de la Unión Corsa declared a peace between groups. We can't violate it. And I can't. <laughs> How do you like that? Somebody finally tells me what they want from me, and somebody I don't even know. And it's even something that I want to do. This is the Armed Forces Radio Network. And now, for the news. But in the rock and roll world, I gotta get involved with the news freak? Sorry. Berlin. One student was fatally wounded today when police again were called to break up a demonstration at the Free University. Authorities identified Joachim Vogelsang as a paid agitator who made frequent visits to the Soviet sector. During the demonstration, 31 students were arrested and six policemen injured. Further details on the evening broadcast. Joachim Vogelsang. Police killed a boy I knew from the demonstrations. And he was not a paid agitator. They lie again, those damn police. Hey, oh, I'm sorry. Poor, sweet, gentle Joachim. Look, the, the guy must have been doing something wrong. Please to shoot him. He must have been doing something wrong. Yeah, he was doing something wrong. He was doing wrong the same things that I do wrong. He was a pacifist. He must have been doing something wrong. Those are the words of the Auschwitz generation. What comes next from you, Abbott? Be quiet, do not demonstrate. You will only scare the conservatives and bring on another Hitler. Huh? I suppose he has to see Delacroix in chambers. I wouldn't worry. Probably just some minor technicality. I suppose. Don't know why it's as though I got the flutters. Well, where's my to draw a prison sentence instead of being deported in your custody? I'm going to miss him. I'm going to miss you too. Still, he'll be 18 soon. He'll be back with us, thanks to Delacroix. You know, I don't go much for lawyers, but that man, he's a bloody treasure. Du Lacroix. 
Amenez le prisonnier. <coughs> We will proceed in English, for the convenience of those concerned, not fluent in French. Uh, we're all that's concerned, and we speak French. Young men, while well, France chose not to prosecute you, attacks on persons are serious matters here. Civilization will not tolerate the anarchy of the young. You are remanded to the prison in Grasse, within the next eight days you will be taken to the airport in Nice and deported from the French Republic in the custody of your mother, Madame Teresa Jordache Kreller. This process is here terminated. The devil it is! We had a deal! Thanks! French justice knows no deals. Your Honor, I have saved my child. Thank you. And God thanks you. This process is terminated. Let me out of here, man. You double-crossed us when you were in there with the judge. Wesley's mother, wasn't it? And when I was called back. There was nothing to negotiate. It was a fait accompli. You didn't recognize me, did you, Gretchen Jordache? Well, God works his justice in many ways. You can run, but you can't hide. It was a blessing his father was killed. There, there's your fallen Jordache family, right there in Time magazine, under the section for crime. You've certainly changed, Teresa. What do you want? I want my rights. Now, we've been to an attorney in Delano. He told us to get our passports and hop a plane to France as fast as we could to save my child. I know my rights as a mother. Now, Wesley is still a minor, and I am now his legal guardian. That is what he said exactly, the lawyer. I can do without you. Now, let's get to the bottom line, Teresa. What do you expect to get from a 17-year-old? Same thing you expect. Only I'm his mother, and I'm not going to let you jib him out of his share of his father's estate. No, when that fancy yacht they wrote about is sold, my son is not going to be left out in the cold. There's no estate, just debts. You wasted a trip. But if you tell the judge you don't want Wesley, I'll pay for your flight. You expect us to believe that? Now listen to me, you slut. I don't care what you believe. I am executrix of Tom's estate. Clotilde is ours for Wes to come back to. That's what he wants, and that's what it's going to be. You can always reach me there. I'd stay, you know, if there was anything I could do. Oh, no, no. You're needed in the States. You've got your work waiting. And your man. Well, at least I know you're in capable hands. Well, maybe not so capable. But incredibly tenacious. Oh, see where's in California and give him a good Christmas. Uh, do you mind if I uh, don't walk you to your car? Because I can't stand goodbyes. Well, it's... See ya. I can't stand them either. I call you when I get back. Yeah. Wonderfully petulant man, Mr. Ginseng, but I want vermilion leaves. Ah, welcome the prodigal film editor. Oh. Now tell me, doesn't this place absolutely require a psychedelic pool? I guess. Oh, you are cross with me. And my houseboy has a big mouth, hmm? Come, Papa Fix.
I'm sorry. Sorry to be so demanding, but I had such an awful time. Everything I tried to do for my family went wrong. I guess I expected you to make room in your life when I got back. I even picked a Saturday, knowing you wouldn't be shooting. This trip, couldn't you possibly cancel? Well, he lives in Sausalito, love, on a houseboat. And he doesn't have a telephone. And the script is hot. Oh, come on, puss. Don't look so forlorn. I'll be back Sunday afternoon and we can cry our little hearts out. Mm -hmm. I had in mind something a trifle less maudlin. <laughs> who is this cockamamie writer anyway who refuses to come to Mohammed? Uh, Sanford. Richard Sanford. You wouldn't know him. I am sorry, darling. You know I'd skip it if I could, huh? It's okay. Give me time to get over my jet lag. Adore you. I lied. Bye. When I want to know anything from you, I'll tell you, you long-legged son of a... You want to call me that? Smile. With a gun against my belly, I... Well, you search the basement, I'll search on outside. Oh, no, you don't. Give me a break, Freddy. I did the best I could. Hey, no! Listen to me, Freddy! Oh, no, no more. Thank you, Mrs. Burke. <laughs> Ten cups is my limit. Uh, you know, I, I, I really appreciate your comments on my script. They're very perceptive. Uh, that, that scene in the bar, for example, uh, you don't know how many versions of that went through my typewriter before oh, here's I... here's Evans. Went... Excuse me. Hi. How's the meeting go? Bloody waste of time. The man's impossible. <laughs> Miss Pink? Mm -hmm. Poor baby. <laughs> Was it money or creative difference? Both. What have you been up to? Come, I'll show you. Mr. Kinsella? I can't tell you what a pleasure this is. I mean, when Mrs. Burke called me and told me that you wanted to talk to me about restoration comedy, I, I thought somebody was playing a joke on me. Somebody was. Richard Sanford, I presume? You're going to be very angry with yourself, pet. If I am, it won't be because I caught you in a lie, but because of all the lies I've overlooked. I'm angry with myself, all right, for loving such a sorry excuse for a human being. Dick, is it? As a writer, I'm sure you can understand why I need some time alone, away from the demands of a menopausal neurotic. For having invoked your name as a pretext, my apologies. All right, uh, if, if I could just call my Alone, agent. Alone? Why bother to lie? It saves some pain. However, since you've a taste for it, yes, I was with someone. Someone possible. Younger. Without a damaged past of Neanderthal fathers or sainted Colin Burks, I was with someone who can be responsible to children, particularly her own. <laughs> Bravo! Accurate, succinct, and brutally devastating. Uh, if it's all the same to you, I'm just... Super attack! Uh, you got my age, you got every painful thing I ever if shared I just with you, use your phone including for a Billy. Because I, I don't have a car, you see. And oh, how you must have loved the mess you found in France. A few more hopeless basket cases to add to your collection, right? Not half so hopeless as your incoherent footage.
I'm going to pretend you didn't say that. Whatever is between us, you're a professional. And you've still got a job to do. And you know what you can do with it. You want it, Vermillion? You got it. Can I drop you somewhere, Mr. Stanford? Yes. I have your ticket, young man. Just hand me the passport. I haven't got it. Give me his ticket. Yeah, I thought you might like to have this. Well, it was Tom's as long as he cared to remember. I think you've just about grown into it now. Yeah. Uh, found some pictures. Uh... Field, uh, Tom, and all of us. Uh, just a little something to remind you how handsome I am. <laughs> Can I talk to him for a minute? Don't uh, plan any revolution. You stay away from me, lady. And you too. Just pretend we're looking at the pictures. You actually are a handsome guy. A guy in prison told me how to get Danovic. You still got Pa's gun? Uh, I am kind of cute, ain't I? What's on your mind, Wes? You know what? I do it myself, only how can I, man? It's all written down. All you gotta do is be there. Hey, hey kid, listen, let me tell you something. Funny, you gotta get... The cops aren't gonna do anything about it. It's a lot now. You're playing. Be a good boy, American. Hey, shipmate. Give me a hug. <laughs> Promise me, Bunny. Promise me? You took care, you said. Here, Papa, please. Now, you call Gretchen. And you be sure to write to here. All right. You write, too. Uh-huh. <laughs> what do you think? I don't know. Sanford's script was shopped at every studio in town. Not even a nibble. You know why? Not one of them could lick the third act. Not even Evans. But I can. Why shouldn't I direct? You know, I paid my dues. Lots of editors have turned director. Is that what you want to do? <sighs> I don't know. I'm so scared, I don't know whether I'm coming or going. You know, editors live in dark places. Director has nowhere to hide. It'll be a big change, being my own boss. Raising the financing, hiring the staff, arranging distribution. I read that script in anger. Now, the idea of directing it, could that be an act of anger against myself? Sometimes making a movie is just making a movie. the wrong office come. Excuse, Peter. My sources indicate that they were looking for evidence of collusion between the CIA and the German press in how the Vietnam War is reported here. Luckily for us both, they came up empty. <laughs> well, uh, you seem to have matters well in hand. Judging by the hue and cry, they won't remain at large very long. And I wish them to remain at large. These two, Nothing and Schiller, 
a cadre of a splinter group calling itself the Morgan Road. It comes from the student left. Hmm? Uh, among other subversive activities, they were influential in assisting your troops to desert to Sweden. Uh, you see, if this were all, I would say, arrest them and be damned. But there is a cancer growing in this nation. The same cancer that compelled a sitting American president to renounce his candidacy for re-election and came perilously close to toppling the French Republic. You see, it no longer remains in the campuses. It spills into the streets, into the offices and homes of some of our more respected citizenry. Bring these two to trial now, and you are gifting them with a public forum. Tough job selling that to the Berlin police, not enough. One of their own is dead. History has taught me that the interests of the Bay and Day and the police are rarely compatible, which is why I need your input. These two are minnows, and I am after shark. I am sure that you are aware that this is of mutual concern to both our governments. The future of NATO depends upon a healthy Germany. I'll have my computer get in touch with you. Do me a favor, B.B. Stay out of the files. I haven't touched your files. I wish you hadn't said that. What do you mean, rejects? Hey, but sometimes you disappoint. Look, if Nixon shaved twice a day, paper trained his dog, and then rolled Pat in a self-help program, I guarantee even he couldn't lay his hands on one of these machines. Excuse me. That is for God to say. Or perhaps your Colonel Day. Say auf Wiedersehen to Herr Fiedler, Wilhelm. You may not see him again. You want me to spy on a friend? All right, so she's a lover. Look, uh, I mean, Monica's radical. She's not a terrorist. She's totally opposed to violence. Then she has fallen into bad company. You will be acting in her best interests. Hmm? What, helping her by helping you? Am I supposed to buy that? Mm. It often works with their parents, sometimes their lovers. It sugarcoats the pill for them. Yeah, well, that's a hell of a pill. I don't cooperate. I got 11 with. Oh, Vietnam. You will find there are a few black market opportunities at the forward Firebase. This Colonel Day now? My CO. No one knows. This is strictly our little arrangement. Well, Sergeant, what's it going to be? He wants me to give him names and information and places you go. He wants me to spy on you. My God. My love, you took such a risk in telling me. I didn't have a choice. I'd lose you if I didn't. I'd probably lost you anyhow. You'll never lose me. I just don't see how he could read me so well. How he knew I'd cave. Well, now you know what a coward looks like. I think not. I think I know what a man who loves me looks like. It helps, but it's still a no-win situation all around. No, do not say that. We will figure it out. I promise. Come. Let us go home, eh? Listen to me. No, Abbott. You listen to me. But I don't understand. It's why you must be so difficult. That part of my life, Abbott, is none of your affair. Well, look, I, I just think that when two people live together, they shouldn't keep secrets from each other. Abbott, what you do not know, they'll never compromise you. After all, do I ask you about the black market? 
Do I? Do I? Tell me. Oh, my darling. But let's not argue. I can think of so many nice ways. To while away the hours. I can't believe you. Are you never satisfied? No. Oh, Abbott. When you touch me, I dissolve. I am helpless before the savage onrush of your raging passion. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my liebchen. My heart. My shot. Oh, oh, unchain the beast. How are you, Mrs. Burr? Nervous. But I'm rapidly discovering it goes with the territory. I don't believe in dragging things out, Mrs. Burke. Oh, it's okay. It's uh, fine. Your figures seem reasonable. The consensus in the industry is that you can do the job. So, I've decided to back your feature. Uh, uh, okay. There are two conditions. One, you provide the completion bond. I mean, this is your first attempt, and I do have to protect my investment. That's fine. What's the other? I wish the picture to be overseen by a producer of my choosing. You don't think I'm qualified? You're not qualified to produce and direct. I've gone over your shooting schedule. There's not an ounce of fat on it. You're going to have your hands full just bringing the picture in on time. I'm unmovable on this, Mrs. Burke. All right, Mr. Lind. Now, who have you cast in the role of Simon Legree? The gentleman on the couch, David Donnelly. A pleasure to meet you, Mr. Donnelly. Oh, I doubt that, but maybe in time you'll come to see me in the list. Oh, villainous light. Sorry to be rushed, Mrs. Burke, but I am late for a meeting. I'll have the uh, completion bonds arranged this week. Oh, by the way, uh, there will be script changes, right? Changes? Yes, you know, the problem in the third act. And I'd appreciate it if you'd get the new pages to me as soon as possible. So you can see whether you approve? No, to see how uh, they affect the schedule. Goodbye. Car keys. You come back here, young man. You're not 18 yet. And as long as you live under Mr. Crayler's roof, you'll conduct yourself with decency and respect. Do you hear me, Wesley? I'll not see you go the way of your father. You may think the sun rose and set on Tom Jordash, but I know better. God knows better. His death was a blessing. Are you listening, Wesley? A blessing. The world's a better place. Wes, remember what you asked me to promise you at the airport? Well, you can forget it, shipmate. Danovic's body washed up at one Lapine two days ago, gift wrapped with bailing wire. Word has it he was Charbonneau's snitch, and the Union Corps found out. Maybe it's all for the best, kid. Oh, no, no, they jumped about a bit before something, but everything's getting so old. I don't know. Could have some trouble, I just don't know. Well, do we cancel the charter then? And we need the money. Well, between trusting me or trusting the gauges, we trust the gauges. We go. <laughs> Ahoy, me! <laughs> we'll spend that deposit anyway. <laughs> Welcome aboard the Clotilde, ladies and gentlemen. Lovely day. Bonjour. Yeah, bonjour. Shall I show you two quarters, ladies? <laughs> hey! Hey, Daddy! Hey, uh, let's forget about that. Cruising along the coast is a regular traffic lane, or even where the fish are. See, we got all the company we want, so you just take her out of the middle of nowhere and park. <laughs> you not see more? Huh? No. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Hey, girl. Hello, all this shape. 
it can bother you. Go to the door, Mayor. <laughs> I wish you could do that. Give me that. Give me that. thousand for the lot. It's yours. What about the china? I'll give a look. Oh, that's in the dining room armoire. That left an hour ago. All oh, right. Uh, the china's in the kitchen. My friend will show it to you. Oh, me. Moving? Selling. I can do for you? Oh, well, I just happened to be in the neighborhood, so I thought I'd drop in and see uh, how things are, you know. I read the changes. Good for you. Well, obviously, this isn't the time to discuss them, so... Uh, <clears throat> what are you doing on the bond? I have it, more or less. More than less. What'd they give you? If I'm 10% over the budget, they pull the plug and replace me. 
consent. Oh, my, my. That doesn't give you much room for, to make any mistakes, does it? Yes, well, that's when I come in. And this is where I go out. So? What? What do you think of the changes? A definite improvement. You like them? Well, I think that's what a definite improvement means. Fifteen hundred for the china. It was the best I could do. He liked them. Now, what do you suppose he meant by that? Have a little chat with you. No, no way, Sartine. The Clopeel doesn't run hash. Thanks a lot, Smiley. Yeah, you know, I wondered why why a fishing boat was always out where there's never been any fish. I should have known, boy. I should have known. Why do you delude yourself? The insurance won't begin to cover half the damage. Well, I like to delude myself. It uh, makes the long nights warmer. Well, spare me, huh? The fact is, uh, you're in a bind, so am I. Uh, my fleet is experiencing difficulties with the Port Authority. Solution! You make a run for me, I repair your Clotilde, and I pay enough to meet your first note. Which, unless I'm terribly misinformed, is surely to fall due. Um, um, Barney, be sensible. Even if she was not in dry duck, the tourist season is almost gone. What do you do when the uh, charters are finished? Don't sweat it, Babble. You get your money. You get it. How? You think Tom Jordish would have gone to a user if he had a choice? My friend Babble here is a businessman. And I can assure you, unless he receives payment on time, he will not hesitate to take your boat. What did Rene say? How long does he figure for the repairs? Not long. A week, maybe. Uh, I came to tell you I got a hotel room for you and the kid in town. A hotel? Nonsense. You'll be my guests. No, I couldn't do that. But you must. Otherwise, my house sits empty. And the servants run amok. You see, I'll be in Paris for at least ten days. By which time, if we don't get these into water, your lovely bouquet will have wilted. Had a little bad luck last week. And a little good. Blew an engine and suffered some fire damage. Nothing serious. Clotilde will be up and around in no time. That's the bad news. Hey! I've got a baby brother! Hey man, far out! <laughs> Out of the shower. Well, that's no reason to flaunt your nakedness. Now, put some clothes on. I want you to go down and see Mr. Crayler. He's waiting for you. 
What'd I do now? Mr. Crailer found out today that his son Max was killed. I'm sorry. He should be. He was a fine young man. He would have been a good example for you. Lord knows you need one. When you're decent, I want you to march down and tell Mr. Crailer how sorry you are. anything I can do. He was a good boy, my Max. Decent. God-fearing. Quoted scriptures by the hour. Chapter and verse. Reverend Loomis said he'd never seen the like. Yes, sir. I'm sure he was a swell person. How would you know? A long-haired, atheistic fornicator who doesn't deserve to breathe the same air as a boy like my Max. Now you answer me. You tell me by what right you have to be standing here, alive and breathing, and my boy is coming back home in a box. How are you going to shoot the scene in the truck yard? Put the actors where they should be, have the cameraman photograph them, and hope nobody gets hit by a truck. I mean truck. I mean trucks, don't you? You have a lot of trucks going this way. Thank you. This way and that way. That's very expensive, you know. So I tell you what you're going to do. You're going to have one truck, and you're going to put it right out in the middle of the scene, right in the foreground, and you're going to play the scene around the truck, and you're going to lay in when you're cutting the picture, the sound of the truck yard, the busy truck yard. And then, when people look at the scene, they're going to swear. It's a busy truck yard. Right? Why use a truck at all? Why not film the whole scene in close up? It cost 40 million to float Elizabeth Taylor down the Nile. And then she knocked out the Mona Lisa for $16 and some change. They say you're very good at what you do. Is it me? Is it women? You drop by rather late at night. You indeed find me working. But I somehow doubt that you'd make a bed check on Sam Peckinpah. <laughs> what we've got here are presidents for both of us. I'm going to direct my first movie. You're going to make a first attempt at good manners. Well, now, how about that? How about what? You have an ego, and that is the first thing a director has to have, is an ego. Now I understand why you've never been married. <laughs> no, this is not where we burst into laughter because we checked each other out. I'm becoming a firm believer in self-defense. Oh, I'll, I'll drink that. To self-defense. Yes, indeed. Would you mind putting a little uh, gin in that, please? I, I realize that my... Drinking habits are the stuff of legends in this town, but you'd be amazed how quickly it improves my disposition. <laughs> you expecting someone? Mm You want me to go away? I just couldn't take it anymore. She kept telling me I was just like him. My own mother. As if it was a disease. Am I? Am I just like my father? Mean. Crazy acting. 
No good to anyone, not even to himself. Is that all there was to him? All there is to me? Oh, dear Wesley. You're very much like your father. Tom had enormous anger, as you do, and I. That anger came from our father. But Tom made it different in himself. My father frightened us, Wesley. I'm still frightened of him. But not Tom. Not my protector, my ally, my brother, Tom. He didn't know how to talk about how he felt, but... You know, it was dangerous in our family to show any kind of vulnerability. But Tom was... wonderful. For what he did, and for what he was. The only love I could count on was from Tom. Like he was with Kate. And Bunny and me. Oh, I want to go back to them, back to the Clotilde. And you shall. <laughs> That's your father's legacy, Wesley. And a marvelous legacy. He gave you ten months. And with any luck, you'll make a life of it. I don't mind admitting I envy you. How could I forget? I've got a brother. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> yeah. I know one thing I'm going to do when I go back. I'm going to hug that kid a lot. You want to hear something weird? You're the first person who's hugged me since Bunny and Kate said goodbye. Sappy, I guess. But I bet people turn mean if they don't get hugged sometimes. <laughs> I wouldn't worry. You'll never lack for hugs, my boy. But you will for sleep if I don't trundle you off to bed. Now in the morning, we'll talk and sort out what's to be done with you. I know you're anxious to get back to France, but you know April's a long way off. Sort out. You sound like Kate. Well, I love you too, you see. Billy's so lucky yours, Mom. We'll be here tomorrow night. I'll deliver it, all right? You'll deliver it, sure. Don't be ridiculous. Apple, please. Please. Now, just listen to me. As a G.I., I can move in and out of Berlin a lot easier than you can and without suspicion, all right? Have you forgotten Neuendorf? No, I have not forgotten Neuendorf. Believe me, he's ever in my thoughts. Hello? Edwick? Hey, it's good to hear your voice. Well, it should be. You haven't heard it in ages. Why haven't you called? Uh, well, it's complicated. Listen, I'll be in Berlin tonight, and I'd love to see you, if you let me. Well, I shouldn't. Oh, I like your style, Nundorf. It's very cloak and dagger. I needed new shirts. What do you think? Not for you. <laughs> Too frivolous. So you go to Berlin tonight? How did you know that? Why Berlin? Why tonight? Well, don't you know the answer to that, too? All right, it's a business trip, and uh, I had with a bonus. Well, look, since you shut me down, I've been living on my savings. You know, it's running low. Guy in Berlin owes me for a load of tires, so... 
That's much more like it. Reinforces my assessment of human nature. Meanwhile, what about Fräulein Vorner? Well, what about her? All right, she's, uh, she's pretty closed mouth, you know. Well, I know she attended a meeting with uh, Zodame Lernig and Hoops a couple of nights ago. I didn't get any other names. You must do better for me, Billy. Much better. Well, which do you prefer, Chinese water torture or thumbscrews? I want to know who's hiding Ernst Schiller and Manfred Lighting. I want to know who's supplying Morgan Roth with funds, with arms. Names, Abbott. Lots of names. How you accomplish this is your affair. Just do it. I think maybe this is what you're looking for, Nullendorf. It uh, picks up the color of your heart.
People. You understand that? Pretty soon they have you killing people too. No. Abbott. How do you suppose they found out? What? Police. How could they know where Montford and Ants were hiding? Don't ask me. How the hell Well, it would be understandable to protect me. No endorse patients is banked in. After one month for the Nancy. Yeah, right, and just to laughs. Let, let's zap a lady while we're at it. A huh? civilian casualty of his caught in the crossfire. Look, I, I didn't have to be there at all, right? I mean, the whole thing could have just been cooked up afterwards to cover my back. Well, I guess that's it then, huh? I guess it's on the wrist. break. Abbott, do not be angry. Please. Come with me. I specifically asked you to leave Schiller and Leiting to the hands of the Riente. Leiting killed one of my officers. I asked you to notify me when they were located. That was the agreement. Morgan Roth is involved. Morgan Roth is your headache. The morale of my men is mine. Come on, B.B., let's get out of here. Hilda's making sour bread tonight. Sarge, call home. That's some hysterical lady. Hey, what's this? You knocking off? You got a lot of work to do. Work? <laughs> you know what time it is? Troops. Hey, let me explain something to you. What we got here is a perpetual oatmeal machine. Now, you know the stuff that we used to bootleg before we went out of business? Oh, you remember that, don't you? Well, the quartermasters are still pouring it all in, and us with no place to put it. I've got a terrific idea where we can put it. Look, we got typewriters stacked up to here, man. Spare parts, enough diesel fuel to go from here to Manhattan. Yeah. It's her again, your maidel. What'll I tell her? I don't care what you tell her. Uh, I'm sorry, ma'am. We still haven't heard from him. Yeah, all right, I, uh, I will try again later. Thank you. Are you seriously suggesting that we lay pipe and pump diesel directly into the sewer line? Hey, don't answer that. It's the idea will have us for breakfast. Well, they won't if we do it right, man. Conrad, anybody say you're excused? It's nearly five, Billy. If you don't like it, put us on report. 
If you really need me, I'll stay. No, thank you, Beeb. It's all right. Go on. as well. I uh, look, don't worry, I'll be cool. Look, Abbott, if you're trying to be the first hero of World War III, save your act for an officer. What are you talking about? The Russians just invaded Czechoslovakia, and we're on full alert. We need our vehicles, so would you kind of get the let out? Move it, troop! Without this, you are no good to us, sister. You go with the times. Or you become a victim of them. Thank God, Ezra. This thing with your soldier will not last forever. What are you going to do when this tour runs out, huh? What? I do not know. Now, we have much to discuss. Yeah, but uh, not here. Abbott is coming home any moment. at least 10 days. You were back in three. I lied. Are you angry? I'm not sure. Do you often lie? I'm a lawyer. If I were not prepared to lie, I would have a paltry practice indeed. Monsieur oh, Delacroix, quel plaisir de vous revoir. Permettez-moi de vous présenter une amie très chère, Madame Jordache. Enchantée, madame. Dites-moi, je compte sur le chef pour se surpasser. Voilà, monsieur, spécial pour vous. Compliments come easily to you. Too easy. I watched you with Gretchen. You're a regular child, boy, eh? It appears I can't please you today. But you do. Just by being yourself. Oh, now I've got to hurt your feelings, haven't I? Oh, what a little boy you are. <laughs> Can I ask you a personal question? Why do my wife and I live apart? <laughs> it's no great secret. As long as there was no divorce, she saw no reason to object. Apart from being a Catholic, Edwige is a very social woman. Mm. That's sad. How so? I don't know. I guess because you're chained to the past, you see. And you? Oh, the past is over for me. I have a son now. Even if I wanted to stay behind, he'd drag me to the future. Kate, if you only knew how good your company is for me. Your company's good for me, too. That wasn't so bad, was it? <laughs> you know, paid in full. I keep my word. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Sloan will contact you when we're ready to make our next run. Well, then he'll just have to wait for a cold day in hell. Because one's my limit. Do I ask? You forget. <laughs> there's, there's a second note. Babble and I, we transacted a little business while you were gone. And uh, I now hold the paper. That's paid in full. <laughs> Ow! Well, I think I have some married cheeks, what? and, uh, yeah, and if I'd have stayed out another day, I'd have my own wool well. <laughs> yeah. Well, better collect my things. What do you mean? You, oh, you mean you, you are going back to the Platilde? Yeah. Well, it's my home, Jean. 
All right, my darling, as you wish. I'll tell Annette to prepare everything for you. Look, uh... Look, Kate, uh... I mean, there's no rush. And, well, I don't think the uh, boat's a place for you, young Tom, right now. Besides, we've got to pay off the second note, and we've got to take out as many charters as we can before the weather gives out. You want me to stay here? I thought you were... Tom's dead. Life goes on, right? Childhood, save it for uh, after the wrap. <laughs> that five and dime was my family's bakery. We lived upstairs. I was 16 before I found out that everybody didn't wake up to the smell of cinnamon buns, dreading the anger of their father, the baker. <laughs> <laughs> Memory Lane can be a treacherous place, can't it? Mm. Oh, there's tomorrow's call sheet. It wouldn't hurt for you to look it over. Look it over, it's burned into my brain. I learned at the knee of Colin Burke, remember? Nice for luck. Do you always kiss your directors? Not if I think they might enjoy it. We'll enter him with a crane shot. I want to see the whole set. Then we'll slowly drop down, dolly in with his cross. I'm going to need to lay track from here to there. Uh, when he hits his first mark, tell your cameraman I want to be at eye level. And then we'll pan from that position over to Miss Miller. She'll do her shtick and uh, that's where I'll cut. Got it? That's a pretty elaborate shot, ma'am. It'll take a couple hours just to light. You've got an hour. Okay, everybody, let's go to work. Where do you want the stand-ins? Put them on hold. Let's get these brutes set up first. What do you say? In English, no. don't call us. We'll call you. All right, let's go to work. Where would you like this? Here is just fine. If you'd rather, we can put your name on it. No problem. No. I like it just the way it is, Mr. Soames. Excuse me, Mrs. Burke. Miss Miller would like you to see her hairdo, please. Oh. Uh, fine. Have her come and see me, will you? Okay. No, not now. Here's your coffee, Miss Miller. Two lumps, black, like you said. Uh-huh. You want to walk? Or shall I call a cab? Ah, uh, you boy. Under your arms. That a script or a growth. You may approach us. We're about to ennoble your mundane existence by permitting you to run lines with us. Sit. Uh, let's see. I think we start with scene 34. If you can find it. Call sheet. I, I'll be right there. Hold the call sheet. We got trouble. I don't know 
mischievous kittens with improbably endowed methods. But I cannot act with this bumbling oak stepping all over my line. Well, I wouldn't have to step all over him if you ever let him out. I mean, it takes you five minutes to say hello. You insolent pup, you presume to tell me how to play a scene? Old man, if it wasn't for your name, you couldn't land a silent bid on Gilligan's Island. That'll be just about enough of that, Mr. Coleman. Excuse me. Now, you're not a child, though God knows you're behaving like one. So I won't ask you to apologize to Mr. Fielding or to this company. What I will ask and demand of you is a modicum of professionalism. Now, let's cut out this nonsense and get on with the scene. Just a damn minute, lady. Now, how come I'm the patsy? If you did your job and talked to this clown About here... About what? The fact that you've rewritten every line of dialogue assigned to you? You haven't once hit your marks, but your chronic mumbling is driving our sound mixer to an early grave? You don't like it? No, Mr. Coleman, I do not like it. Stick it, sweetheart. I, uh, I really don't know. I'll have to check with Mr. Donnelly. Thank you. Well, if we shut down for a month, we've got a crack at Ian Stockwell. Only, of course, we can't shut down. You stop kicking yourself. You did the best you could. Coleman picked the arena. If you'd given in to him, you'd be dead in the water. <laughs> Problems, my dear ones. I have an elegant solution. Now, don't act. Don't even think about acting. Just be yourself, and I'll talk you through it. What if I stink? Then I'll kill you. Do. I can't believe this. I just... He's beautiful. He's absolutely beautiful. The kid's a natural. And the camera just loves him. It's presents. He'd think he'd been acting all his life. <laughs> oh, David, it's going to be all right. And he's really going to be all right. Oh, yes, it's going to be all right. before Christmas. My mum says she disowned me if I didn't bring little Tom home now. I will survive, but the outcome is questionable. Where are we going? <laughs> They're smashing. Mm. Why did you show it to me? Because I want to buy it for you. Don't look so amazed. I couldn't accept anything like that. Why not? I have more money than I know how to spend. And my children are provided for by their grandparents. Well, I couldn't, Jean. I've also given thought to your problems with the Clotilde. I'd like to pay off the remaining note. <laughs> Think about it. Don't make any decision until you come back from England. And talk to Bunny about the Clotilde. Yeah, can't talk to him about anything these days. Oh? No. It's just hash. For the rich. What about? You know, I want to tell you something. I want to tell you something. You know, all your nosing around and figuring out what Sartine has me doing. You think you, you think you got something on me to uh, get me out of the way with Kate? Waste of time, pal. Because I'm not in the way. So have yourself a ball. I want to. However, I happen to care for Kate. And while you may not realize it, you and the Clotilde are precious to her. If you become owned by Sartain, the consequences... I don't want to see Kate weep on your account. There has been enough tragedy in her life. I have a fascinating practice, Mr. Dwyer. Clients and in 
information come to me from all milieus. I think you will soon discover that you heard the last of Monsieur Sartain. I had hoped to get him for trafficking in drugs, but tax fraud will do very nicely. Now I would be derelict in my duties, Monsieur Delacroix, if I didn't point out to you that should Sartain suspect that you played a role in his arrest, you'll find yourself in dire jeopardy. Why should he suspect? No one but you, Inspector, knows where the information comes from. Good night. I don't know, Edgar. We go over the same question every day for weeks. You know, I simply cannot just leave him. You're still thinking of your sergeant. Well, yes, I love him, Aegon. This had to come in with that. Yeah, but I, I am not sure that I am ready. Afterwards, there's no going back, yeah? No. When you're calm, you think about all of it. What you're leaving behind and where you will be going, and then you make your decision. If you're not prepared to go the rest of the way, I will understand. Bonnie, heard the news? They put Sartain away. You're kidding. Kate and I will be back from the airport in about an hour. Lunch will be ready, monsieur. Thank you, Annette. Tell me, how do I look today? Debonair? Dashing? Totally irresistible? Magnifique! A man among men! Good. Christmas, in January, and February. And I'm a civilian again. The only thing I want to do is play tennis all over Europe with my trusty trainer at my side. Oh, sure. And I am to live my life and my politics and chaperone this incorrigible all over Europe. Well, you can leave behind anything you want to. As long as you marry me. What? But you marry me. Certainly not. What do you take me for? A bourgeois romantic? But you didn't say no positively, Must you be married did you? to your trainer? Did you? Must you be married did to your you trainer? Did you positively? Positively. I... I'm frozen. I'll take you to bed. It's the best thing. You tempt me, Abbott. Of course. No, I... No, 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 I... I still haven't shopped for your Christmas present. Look, you you drop me on the cards flat, and I will meet you later at your Colonel Day's. I love you. Damn wind.
Well, she didn't say no positively. Charming, Billy. I always knew you were hell-bent for a split level in Nyack. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard the news? All hell's breaking loose in West Berlin. Radical students set off bombs in a department store. They tried to ambush a police van. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. With their eyes all aglow with... Der Morgan wrote... A Berlin-based student activist group issued a manifesto which was delivered to Das Bild this afternoon, taking responsibility for today's aborted attempt to free Manfred Latting and Ernst Schiller, who, owing to a change in venue, were being transferred to Bonn for trial when the incident occurred. Latting, two officers, and one of the attackers were killed during the shootout between police and anarchists. Two key members of the group escaped. They were identified as Egon Hubisch and Monica Volner. The latter's charred body was subsequently discovered by the authorities in the flaming wreckage of an abandoned getaway car. Hubish remains large. Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide? Don't want to hug me, do you? Huh? Not very safe loving me, you see. What happened to you then? I fell. Not ten steps from here. Oh, I didn't hear you. It happened a long time ago. What was I supposed to mean? Rather, someone would tell me why it is that everyone dear should come to grief. I don't know, you see. Except that Tom and Jean Paul had the misfortune to love me, and and now I feel it's my fault. You see? Well, that don't make sense. Well, I can't sort it out. Well, I don't know why Delacroix was killed, but we both know I I came to Tom. Yeah, letter from Wes. Sent along his wages to pay the notes. Oh, well, we'll deposit it for him. Notes have been paid. Well, you tell him that then when he gets here. And you be sure to tell him how they got paid. 174C, take three. All set? Action. Bring him on in.
Yvonne? Well, do we or don't we? We do. And cut. That works for me. Get me off. No. Got the coverage. Friends, that's a wrap. Madam Director, you've earned it. <laughs> for she's a jolly good fellow, for she's a jolly good fellow, for she's a jolly good fellow. And so say all of us, and so say all of us, and so say all of us. Conditions of discharge honorable. Thank you, sir. I was informed by the German police that you abused your honor on this post as a black market operator and as an associate of terrorists. I was informed by a friend in the Pentagon, CIA says you performed in the national interest. The honorable on your DD-214 is a CIA gift. So is the European discharge you requested. In the entire world, is there anything that you respect? I respect you, sir. Like hell you do. Don't bother to salute Mr. Abbott. It won't be returned. Dismissed. Why remain in Europe? Aren't you being needlessly hard on yourself? The memories it holds can't be particularly nourishing. I should think you would leap at the opportunity to return home. Where might that be, home? Oh, look, I almost forgot. Well, you were always wanting some Dresden figurines. Why don't you open it later, huh? Things kind of tend to break around here. It'll heal, you know. Just try not to pick at the scabs. Listen, don't worry about me, really. Wherever, whatever, I... I promise to lead an amusing life. about the ground fog at LAX. The weather in New York's terrific, huh? Oh, the drive was good for my nerves. I've been a basket case ever since they disappeared. What disappeared? Didn't you get my wire? Three cut reels of restoration comedy are missing. Oh, that wire. Well, what does uh, Lucement de Critique Francais mean to you? The week of the French critics. A series of films by a new director. Right? So I snuck their committee in New York to look at the first 30 minutes of your picture. 
You and I had better get on the stick because we're all expected in Cannes the first week in May. Hey, what's the matter? Don't you want your film entered into the Cannes Film Festival? Is it deliberate, David? I mean, do you want me to like what you do but be furious at the way you do it? I mean, how dare you enter my film into competition without even consulting me? Would you have said yes? Yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, yes. I don't know. Maybe. Suppose it bombs. Suppose it doesn't. Well, I don't care. You have absolutely no right to make a decision affecting my life without asking me, ever. Did you ever think of getting married again? Well, I figured I'd raise the subject now before you became rich and famous. And I think some of it was my fault. Here are my papers. My draft board knows where I am. I'm not here to take a job from a French citizen. I paid the notes outstanding on the Clotilde, so I now own property and can hire a French citizen. You may not like it, but that puts me in the most eligible category for a residence permit. So I want my carte de séjour, and I want it signed by you personally. You gonna tell me to be careful about what I say this time, Inspector Charbonneau? It's all in order and correctly stamped by the French consulate in New York. So, welcome home, Mr. Jordache. Speed out. She feels real good. She's handling about the same. Ah, oh, Bunny, I lived through this. That's it. Money. I met people who live for it, you know? My own mom. She actually had police out looking for me when I ran away. All on account of money.
I don't ask you people to be crazy about this ship like I am. I love it at all. But even if I didn't love you, I got a little baby brother to take care of now. So tell me, what's wrong? Clotilde looks crummy. You haven't taken care of her. What are the two of you? Since everything I made, how much more stinking money do we need to get this boat back the way? Get us all back the way it was. Uh, you don't like the kind of charters I've been taking out? Huh? Because you're not gonna like the kind of charters I took out to pay the notes. All that money that you sent, I sent an account just for you. Because we didn't need it. Do you remember Sartin? Denevich Bell. Yeah, I remember. What could Sartin do for us? That's not what Sartin could do for us. But ask me, Wes. I could run hash to him. Uh, on Clotilde? It paid the notes. That's why I kept engines up good. I used to keep everything up good. You could have waited, buddy. It's only lousy stick and money. You could have waited for me. I don't count what I could have since Tom. Anything that I do or didn't do just kept rolling and rolling and rolling wrong. I'll leave the ship if you want. It's over. Not you and us. The bad times are over. You don't understand me, Wesley. Well, you better understand this. With the season coming up, we're gonna sweat, shipmate. <laughs> different if I'd come down here for your dad's funeral. I should have. I'm sorry I didn't. Anyway, the other time I came here, I brought you a Stones album, but you didn't have anything to play it on. So I brought you another album and a stereo. Permission to come aboard? Your mom's gonna be in Cannes for the film festival. That's less than a month from now. You gonna say something? I'm thinking about it. I'm not trying to interfere in your life. Hell, I'm not. Gretchen's maybe the best person in the world, your mom is. And I owe her. She wants more than anything to get it back together with you. She said that? She didn't have to. There's been too much time and too much happened. She may not want to know me, Wes. There's a lot of that going around. Bull. Dear Mother, once there was a stranger to us both named Billy Abbott. He knew so much on the subject of families that he wouldn't even answer a letter from you. Families love and destroy. Sons rebel, daughters run off and get married. Well, Billy Abbott didn't either. He hid in the army. But for reasons having nothing to do with his mother, that isn't possible anymore. So, good luck or bad luck or loneliness or remorse, which doesn't give a damn, put me in the company of a young giant named Wesley Jordash, who believes I'm family. And that's enough for him to want me around. I may need that more than he needs me. Wes told me about the festival and the film you made together, and I was wondering if you'd mind if I'm around Cannes while you're there. 
I'd like to know who else I need. Your son, if you'll have him. Billy. P.S. You asked for it, you got it. Had a girl give him help. places, but he could have been selling aluminum siding in Encino. Not a word about the army, about what he's been doing with his life these past four years. All he talked about was the movie and how excited he is for me. There's another movie, though, the one we didn't talk about. The one that plays in his mind, starring Gretchen Burke as the mother who neglected him for her career and whose infidelities killed his stepfather. And in the remake, she came to Cannes for her career with a new lover. He pretended to be wild about the remake. But later, aboard the Clotilde, I discovered him vomiting in the head. He blamed it on some bouillabaisse he'd had for lunch. I didn't tell him Wesley had already mentioned they'd had burgers at a McDonald's in Nice. My son. My son hides behind a dazzling smile and lies to spare my feelings. Okay, seeing you with me pushed the old buttons and he lied to make you feel good. That's, um, that's one lie I think I'd forgive. I came here to forgive and be forgiven, to be a mother. I didn't even get to see Billy's room. Oh, I checked the sheets. They're fresh. They're fresh. I just wanted to see what it felt like with a stiff upper lip. Egon, it is just a coincidence. His mother has entered a film in the film festival. I don't like such coincidences, no matter what the reason. The fact remains, Abbott is an unstable element. Now, we have gone to considerable length to create a viable new identity for you, to secure bona fide press credentials. If he calls to you on the Boulevard Crosset with a gendarme every 10 meters, so much for your cover. Are you Monica, this entire operation was your brainchild. Without you, it cannot possibly succeed. For all we know, he's already contacted the authorities. If that is the case, then the game is up, is it not? And if not, you leave the matter to me. I know how to protect my cover. Can I have your autograph? There'll be no nepotism. You'll stand in line with the rest of my adoring fan. Hey, Wesley! Wesley! Come in! Come in! Remember me? Yeah. Hey, excuse me, it's a guy I remember from up in prison, Glass. Hey, all right, I'll keep your seat then. Okay. Hey, Billy, here, give me your other arm. <laughs> mm. 
What happened to you, man? A postcard from the man that was the cause of your problem. Maybe we'll talk soon, huh? What do you mean, the man who caused my problem? Danovic's dead. Danovic didn't snuff your father. He was bought and paid for. But you told me that I was wrong. He wouldn't scratch his nose without the knot from Sartin. That's right. Kill this. From him to me. And that's how it was for your old man. So that's right. But he's in prison. He was. He bought himself a judge. Look. There's a villa by the plaque that I got up. You tell him Magliotti sent you. I could clobber Bunny. Well, it's not his fault. He said Madame Thibault couldn't sit tonight. Yeah, where's Wes got to? Do you think he's got the butterflies? Well, if he doesn't, he's made of sterner stuff than I am. That's for sure. <laughs> Somebody's been blowing in your ear, kid. Sartin didn't kill Tom. I know that for a fact just as well as I know it wasn't done of it. You knew and you never told me? Never did anything about it yourself? Of all the people in the world, I... I took you for guts! Give me the names. And get you killed, too? I want you to listen to me. Because I'm going to tell you something. Come on, baby. That's all right. Come right here. That morning, I, uh, I was so drunk, and I was coming back here, and the guy was already here leaning on him. And all his life, Tom never learned to let him lean on him. And the gun, uh, the gun made so little noise, uh, pop, pop. I mean, even where I was standing, I could barely hear it. I froze it, Wes. I hid there till it was all over and all the time. My best friend's lying there dying. And I hadn't even lifted a finger. You didn't have a weapon? No. Does that make it right? No, we could have expected you to... Oh. Well, the whole time that I was hiding there, I was thinking about, about everything in the world that I love and cared for and couldn't have because Tom already had it. Clotilde, Kate, baby coming. And you. How could I have everything in the world I love? If I told you a Kate, I could have saved him and didn't try. And since then, I... I didn't even have enough in me to say a word about her taking up with Delacroix, Tom Hartley Cole. And I got him killed too. I got him killed too. I never said anything about that either. And then she came back. And we, we were so close again, just... Just us. And the kid on the boat. I still couldn't tell her. Oh, don't you see what a great liar I've turned into? I even, I even told you Madame Thibault couldn't sit tonight because I couldn't face coming to your movie. I just couldn't face it. Are you lying now, Bunny? Are you in on it? Did you kill my dad? I wonder.
once left in my life? No. No. And I can't tell you who did because you just kill him and you throw your life away, Wes. I can't even let you kill me because your life's over that way, too. I just let it go. I just, uh, I just need the inspector to sign a, uh, carte de, uh, seizure. He's got an interrogation. Oh, oh Sazerac, give me a break. Come on. Hmm. Okay, go on in. Sazerac, you a pal. Is there any problems? A little. Come, let's talk. them read it afterwards. Sit down. I saw you kill Tom. At the time, I thought I heard something. It's only the scurrying of a wolf rat, I told myself. And so it was. You saw everything. But you are not like the boy. You can't want revenge after all this time. <laughs> Maybe you wish me to arrest myself, is that it? <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> your friend if I call them, wouldn't you? And some idiot would believe you. So, uh, my report will show that following your arrest, you and yourself in your cell with your own belt. Now stand up and take it off. Come on, take it off.
Well, do we or don't we? We do. I don't know who is the greater infant. What would you all do without your Madame Thibault? I don't know, Madame. Thanks a lot for coming over. <laughs> Hello, Sazarac. Do you have business with me? Is uh, Monsieur Dwyer about? No. No, he's not. What do you want with him? Something terrible has occurred. Uh, Inspector Chardonneau has hung himself in an interrogation cell with his own belt. Monsieur Dwyer was with him earlier. We thought perhaps he could tell us if uh, the inspector was uh, in despair or... <sighs> one thinks one knows a man. Yeah. If you think you know someone. You left me no forwarding address. Well, you should have gone to the cemetery. There were fresh flowers on your grave. Oh, no, I haven't told anyone if that's what you're wondering. I'm not sure why. I lead a very tentative life these days. Do I still call you Monica? My name is Lisa. Lisa Yeager. I'm a journalist. <laughs> Can you believe it? Abbott's best cover is the story that is closest to the truth. So if anyone asks you, you tell them we knew each other in Germany. Did we really? I wish I believed that. Why did you come here? Why not? I lead such a life as I can. And what about your politics? Politics, politics. Must you always make our lovemaking so complicated? Everything else is, isn't it? Out there, yes. Not here. Here there's only you and me. And what we feel about each other. Too late or not. I love you. I love you, Abbott. There's nothing else. Categorized as a director in the American tradition, a storyteller with a unique perspective. Fifth floor, ladies' lingerie, and uh, garden too. <laughs> what I don't understand is why Simpson scheduled me to have lunch with the Paramount people and lunch with the Fox people. You don't have to eat, you know. Love you too. Oh, 
Julien Oh, I, I, I was expecting room service. Close. I'm Billy's mother. I can come back. Uh, no, no, please, uh, uh, come in. Your son is in the shower. Oh, dear. Well, I imagine you already knew that. <laughs> yeah. uh, fortunately, he also plays tennis. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but excuse me. Uh, my name is uh, Lisa Yeager. How do you do? You're a friend of my son's? Yeah. Oh, my God. This is awful. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we are good friends. We, uh, we knew each other in Munich. You know, uh, without these damn identity badges, I would forget who I am. You work for a large paper? Uh, no, I'm, um, I'm what you call freelance. Competition must be stiff. Oh, for you too, I, uh, I think, yeah? Oh, yes. Ah. Uh, I tell you what, Lisa. Yeah. <clears throat> While Billy's dressing, why don't we go downstairs and have some breakfast? Well, I'll uh, even give you an exclusive interview. Ah. <laughs> in, uh, in fact, I'll do better than that. Um, I've made a lot of contacts since I've been here, so as soon as we finished, I'll start making some calls. Right. Uh, Billy, I'll be right back. Monica. Monica. The rest Asian comedy was your directorial debut. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. What an achievement. I congratulate you, and I think that's all I need. Oh. Not very sporting, was it, buying you with an interview with a continental breakfast? <laughs> I have an unhappy son, Lisa. Uh, unhappy in my presence, anyway. I don't know the cause. Maybe he's always like that. I don't even know if I have the right to inquire. Of course you have the right to inquire. You're his mother. Yeah. I don't think yours is a casual relationship. Do you use the word in the same way? Uh, yes, we do. And, uh, no, it is not casual. Lisa, I've been trying to make up for so many misspent years by becoming a sudden and very overwhelming mother. But uh, Billy seems so intimidated. The army must have been hideous. He won't discuss the past, his past, and seems indifferent to the future. I can't help but think it's me. Mrs. Burke, I mean Gretchen, <laughs> it is not you. Your son loves you very much, I know that. I think in Germany, he simply did not know it. You must believe me. She's quite extraordinary, Billy. Bright, brave, and decent. I hope things go well with her. Uh, I'll do what I can not to be a ghost that haunts your future. Well, Molly, can I give you some advice? Well, you know all the bright and brave and decent. Well, the first person I saw that in was you. And my advice to you is, that you should love yourself a lot. I sure do. Now, prepare to defend yourself, woman. Last night you got to show me what you do best. Today it's my turn. Come on. Yes, baby. Okay. The prize winner will be the first time in all Europe. We have not yet the cameras yet. What's going on? What's going on? Kind of speck and pass, pass. Thank you. Listen, let's get this taken care of. Let's get this crew back to work, shall we, please? Come on, Abby. Oh, the place. Hey, how'd you know that was going to work, huh? Bullying them? Yeah. Bullying them is easier than picking your luck. <laughs> the festival jury's in session now. In the main competition, word is. The three big prizes will go to Z, or If, or Adeline 31. I heard they were all marvelous. Guess I'll just have to catch them at the drive-in. Word on the new director's competition is that it's between Restoration Comedy and Easy Rider. So you or Dennis Hopper will get either the big award or the special citation. That's the word. They'll have the press corps locked in a room upstairs. What a marvelous idea. After they've been announced, the winners leave the main hall by the stage exit. 
and go up a flight of stairs to talk to the reporters. So this is the press room. With the monitors are here, even the cameras are not. Tele Europa. Fenster. What a view. You can see everything from here. Tour. Wonder where this goes. So you see, my friends, the festival jury will select our prisoners for us. And we will exchange the winners for Camerad Schiller. After Aegon takes the microphone from the Master of Ceremonies to read our demands, the Morgenrod will give you all the best drama of the 1969 festival. I estimate three days of negotiations with Bonn before they put Schiller on a plane to Algeria. They stop here to pick us up. Less than three days if the French government intercedes. They would not want a bloodbath in Cannes over a German issue. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> we have to get up. We both have previous engagements. Yeah, I know. Hmm? All right. Shh. Go take your shower. I fix us some drinks. Hmm? Hmm? It's late. It's late. So, that's it. I know it hurts, but I figured you'd want to know. Poor Bunny. Always tried to live by the rules and him not able to keep them. Except by leaving us. Oh, yes. Listen, I've been thinking. Maybe we should just go into dry dock and start looking for another man. We? Oui. What about the movies? You gotta want it, Kate. What I want's right here. Always has been. Oh, uh, better get going. You gonna be okay? Oh, yeah. I'll be better than that, love. I'll be perfect. See you, Tom. Ceremonies. Next time, my mother. Next time. Not tonight. For tonight, it is better that you play truant. Hmm? That way, I know you are safe. Ceremony. Something's gonna happen. And my mother. I can't. I can't. Schlaf. Schlaf, my angel. Right. It's nothing. I told him it was a craziness, but he insisted on playing tennis all day and also seat. 
So now he pays the price. He does have a fever. Mm -hmm. Did you call a doctor? Oh, yeah, yeah. He, uh, what was the word that he used? Um, dehydration. And he gave Billy a sleeping pill and told him to drink plenty of liquids. Well, that's it then, I suppose. I'm sorry he won't be there. But uh, his health comes first. I could leave a, uh, leave a wake up call at the desk, just in case. Yeah, yeah, that is an excellent idea. After a few hours' rest, who knows? He might be all right. And I know how much it would mean to him to share in your triumph. Yeah. Well, it's not a triumph yet. But thank you for your vote of confidence. And for taking care of my son. See you there? Oh, yes. was nothing else. Cette année, notre audience sera aussi internationale que nos films. Par exemple, Isadora, l'histoire d'une danseuse américaine, n'est jouée par une actrice anglaise. Dillinger est morte, lui aussi en américain, et cette fois-ci jouée par des Italiens. C'est une histoire sur la Grèce, interprétée par des acteurs français, et filmée en Algérie. Le monde entier était ici. Projeté sur notre écran, la Grande-Bretagne. Le jury était sélectionné parmi les mêmes membres de la communauté internationale des artistes de cinéma et artistes dans d'autres domaines. Le vote sont tenus secrets et sont sans favoritisme patriotique ou personnel. performance par une actrice, le jury donne le prix à Vanessa Redgrave pour Isadora. L'année dernière, ce moment même, la politique était sur cette scène sous la forme des premières hauteurs. I'm telling you, officer, you got to. 
There's no time. My neck. Oh, hell. Le prix le plus haut conféré par le jury, la palme d'or, est décerné à Lindsay Anderson. If Grand Bretagne. You're next up, winner. I love you. Mention spéciale dans la semaine des critiques français pour la meilleure mise en scène d'un premier long métrage non documentaire à Gretchen Burke pour Restoration Comedy. We were clever enough to make him tell us about the bomb. <laughs> Get me to the EST and patch the call to the commander of CRS battalion. A tout à l'heure. Le prix de la semaine des critiques français pour le meilleur film par un nouveau metteur en scène, Dennis Hopper. Easy Rider, Etazini. <laughs> Messieurs, Mesdames, veuillez rester calme. Nous avons été informés de la police d'une menace de bombe. Par précaution, nous vous demandons de bien vouloir quitter la salle. Ladies and gentlemen, kindly remain calm. The police have informed us of a bomb threat. As a precaution, we ask you to leave the hall. This is merely a precaution. Please leave the hall. Come on. Here I'm going to find Gretchen. Okay. All of you, stop! Hold! There's no bomb threat. Just relax, because you're not going anywhere. You understand me? Yes. Leave Miss Berg. Leave now. Save yourself. Please leave. I don't want to hurt you. I said go. I don't want to hurt you. Please go. Please go. Go! I love you! Out of here! Now! Get out there! Snare you, hear me? You better run. You better run! Now you. Oh, Don't ask me questions. Get out of here. What must I do? Push you out! Get out! <laughs> I 
When you recognize one, say so, after he passes. Anyone else? No, sir. What? No, sir. That's better. Inspector, what is it? That lady. I swear that when she arrived, she had red hair. Strange, is it not? Very. I think perhaps we should talk to her. Look! I see one over there! I swear it. I am your enemy. 